Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and reading an excerpt from Earth Girl by Janet Edwards. So, as you might see, this is an uncorrected advanced reader copy, and what that means is that this is an advanced version that is sent out to reviewers before the book is published. Um, and as I mentioned in my previous video, I was a book reviewer. I guess I still am. Um, I just haven't had a lot of time to sort of keep up with it. Um, but I was sent Earth Girl by PYR Science Fiction and Fantasy. Um, admittedly, they did send it to me many years ago. Um, actually, in 2013. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to read it at the time, um, but I recently read it last week, and I wanted to share my thoughts. So, Earth Girl is a science fiction, um, and I will actually read you the excerpt, or the summary on the back. So it says, 200 1,788. Only the handicapped live on Earth. 18-year-old Jara is among the one in a thousand people born with an immune system that cannot survive on other planets. Sent to Earth at birth to save her life, she has been abandoned by her parents. She can't travel to other worlds, but she can watch their vids, and she knows all the jokes they make. She's an ape, a throwback, but this is one ape girl who won't give in. Dara makes up a fake military background for herself and joins a classroom of norms who are on Earth for a year of practical history studies, excavating the dangerous ruins of the old cities. She wants to see their faces when they find out they've been fooled into thinking an ape girl was it Nor? She isn't expecting to make friends with the enemy, to risk her life to save Norms, or to fall in love. And I'll read you guys the author's excerpt as well, a little bit about Janet Edwards. Janet Edwards grew up in prosaic England also shared lives of amazing people in fantastic worlds. Her guides were books written by authors, some still famous and some already forgotten. Those authors have hundreds of individual names, but they have one title in common. They were all expert dreamers. After growing bored with work and involving tedious technical facts, Janet made a break for freedom through a magical wardrobe and is now training as an apprentice dreamer. She has a husband, a son, a lot of books, and an aversion to housework. Visit her online at www.janetedwards.com Alright, so that's your preface. I am going to actually read you a couple pages of the first chapter, just so you get a feeling for the author's writing style in the world, and a little bit of context, um, and then I'm going to give you my opinion.
page, Earth Girl. Okay. Chapter One. It was on Willem Crane Day that I finally decided what I was going to do for my degree course, Foundation Year. I had a mail about it from Isette that morning. It showed her jumping up and down on her bed in her sleep suit waving a pillow and singing. Make your mind up, Jara. Do it, do it. Make up, make up, make up your mind, girl. She was singing it to the tune of the new song by Zen Arith. The set is totally powered on it, but I don't think much of his legs. Iset is my best friend. We're both 17, and we did, we'd been in nursery together and had neighboring rooms all through home and next step. She'd put in her application for the medical foundation course months ago. Isette is organized and reliable. I'm not. Most of my other friends had made their decisions, too, except for Keon, who was planning to do absolutely nothing. He'd been doing that all through school, and I had to admit, he was good at it. I didn't fancy being another Keon, so I had to decide what to do and I had to do it fast. The deadline for applying for courses was the day after the holiday. Willow Crane Day is a holiday on Earth, just like all the other worlds, but in the circumstances we don't have celebration parties the way they do. Thaddeus Willow Crane invented the portal and gave humanity the stars. But we on Earth are the one in a thousand who missed out when he created the ticket to the universe. One of my private fantasies is inventing a time machine and traveling back in time nearly 650 years to 15 November 2142. I would then strangle Willem Crane at birth. If it wasn't for him, I'd be normal instead of labeled a knee, a throwback. Yes, I am one of them. The polite people would call me handicapped, but you can call me ape girl if you like. The name doesn't change anything. My immune system can't survive anywhere other than Earth. I'm in prison, and it's a life sentence. If you're still scanning this, I expect it's just out of shock that an ape girl can write. Amaze! Totally Zan! You will cry to your friends in disbelief. But you know that I'm just the same as you, really. It could have been you here. On Earth, and me traveling between worlds, if only the dice had fallen differently. When you have a baby, it could turn out like I did, or have to be portaled to Earth in minutes, and it dies or it dies. Sorry. My psychologist says you people are scared of us. He says that's why you call us names and have your little superstitions. We see it on all the vids. Portaling between worlds late in pregnancy turns your baby into a man. Don't eat carrot jelly when you're pregnant or the baby will be an ape. The latest scare is plastered all over the newsies and everyone throws out their Karen's jelly, and it makes no difference at all. It's all rubbish. The best scientists have been researching this for hundreds of years, and they still don't have a clue. Every other handicap can be screened out or fixed, but not this one. Whether you eat Karen's jelly or not, it can get your baby just the same way. Maybe they'll find a cure one day, but with my luck, I bet I'm dead by then. I expect I'll die the day beforehand, so Faye can have a big last laugh at my expense. My psychologist also says that I still have a lot of unresolved bitterness and anger. He's right. <laughs> You've probably already noticed it. I was feeling especially bitter 
on 15 November 2788. I was due to meet Candace in half an hour and tell her my decision on my course, my career, my whole future life. I still hadn't made up my mind and really needed to do some hard thinking. Naturally, I avoided doing that by watching the vid. The vid info channels were all packed with special anniversary programs. Half of them were showing that old footage of the first experiment that everyone has seen a thousand times. Willem Crane smirks at the camera and says, One small step for a man, one giant leap for humanity. Do you know he stole that line from the first moon landing? Do you even know that they went to the moon by rocket long before they portaled there? Probably not. <laughs> well, that's a fascinating bit of prehistory for you. Totally free of education tax. The rest of the info channels were either showing bits about the first interstellar portals or the exit of century that emptied Earth. I switched to the vid and channels, but they were all showing vid stars getting drunk or powered at huge parties. I spotted the male lead of, out of the new vid series, Defenders, Arax and Domix. Now there's a man with good legs. I'm a big fan of those scenes where he's looking sexy and heroic in his tight-fitting military uniform. Saving humanity from the mythical menacing aliens that we still haven't discovered moment to listen. Great tragedy that the genius Thaddeus Willem Crane died so young before he could even portal to another planet himself. I turned off the vid before Eric could demonstrate his stupidity any further. Nice legs, but not much on the brain cells. I shouted my frustration at the blank screen. Don't you know that the genius was already 64 when he got the first portal working? He didn't die young. He lived to celebrate his hundredth. It took them another hundred years before anyone portaled to another habitable planet. Work out how old he would have needed to be to go there, Nardle Brain. It annoys me so much when people don't know their history. I have a passion for facts and Soon I'm a natural historian. I was just rebelling against it because being a historian is like giving in to fate what giving in to what fate has done to me. Everyone knows Earth is for the triple H. Hospital, history, handicapped. There are other careers you can follow on Earth. We need the entire infrastructure any other world has but our two big specialty areas are medicine and history. So it boiled down to this. I could be a dutiful, stereotype, handicapped, and become a historian. Or I could rebel by not studying something I loved. Great choice. Then I thought of a third possibility. I could do it if I was crazy enough or angry enough. I was grinning like a maniac as I went out of my room and headed down to the portal in the entrance hall. I met Candace in the huge tropical bird dome of Zoo Europe. They have an even bigger one in Zoo Africa, of course, but cross-continent portaling is more expensive than local and you hit time zone problems. You probably didn't know that, since Earth is the only world with more than one inhabited continent. Another Candace was sitting on the beach by the cuppy pool. I sat next to her, and for a moment we just watched the tiny shimmering crimson, electric blue, and emerald tails of the male puppies as, as they showed off to the drab females. Overhead, there were flashes of iridescent feathers from birds in flight. I loved this place, with its rampaging plants, humid jungle smells, and the constant Candace and I had been meeting here for years, and I still never tired of it. So, there was 
much inside of Jara's head for every little thought that she has. Um, there's basically nothing that we don't know about her very personally. Um, so we experience things from this very biased perspective, and I mean bias as in, you know, it is solely Jara's thoughts that we're getting and very unfiltered thoughts, right? Um, so I guess obviously that always kind of makes a difference for the other characters because you're only getting like Jara's perspective of the characters, um, which is why I guess some people don't quite like first person um, perspective or point of view because in third person you can flesh out the entire cast of characters a little better usually. Um, I don't mind first person. Um, there was a very slight romance, which I like to bring up because I know some people don't like romance. I do. Um, I actually quite enjoy romance. This is not a romance novel by any means. Um, it was not overpowering. It wasn't even necessarily a main plotline. It didn't really come into play plot-wise until the very end. Um, so don't feel deterred by that. Um, it was a cute touch, you know, not mad about it, not necessarily happy about it. It was there and I appreciated it. Um, one thing I definitely really enjoyed and would potentially like to see an exploration of in future novels, because this is a trilogy, this is the first of three, um, is the whole um, class dichotomy that's created um, between the handicapped and the norms, you know, the people on Earth who can't go to other worlds. Um, they are treated as second-class citizens by a lot of people. They are even seen as inhuman by some people, even though those are the more extremes. Um, in general, they are ridiculed, which is kind of the whole point that Jara was trying to make, is she was trying to convince her classmates that she was normal, and then kind of do a big reveal and be like, oh, guess what? I was handicapped, so everything you thought you knew about handicaps is wrong. Um, it doesn't quite work out that way, um, which, you know, I would really like an exploration of that because obviously that is something that has a lot of parallels. Racism, sexism, ableism, which is the direct parallel to that. Um, all of the isms that unfortunately exist in our society. That's a really great parallel and I think that um, if Janet Edwards really explores that and um, from my understanding, from the brief things that I've read, the following books she does, which is cool. Um, I think that it would make a really good series. Um, I don't know that it would be at the top of my list to read, but I think that I eventually may um, get the next two books and read them. Um, either way, it was an enjoyable read. It was definitely entertaining. Um, and if you're a sci-fi fan, especially if you're a fan of, like, um, very tech, techy sci-fi, you know, that, that relies really heavily on, like, technology and, and, um, that kind of stuff, I think you'd enjoy this. Um, give it a look. because 
Uh, but even then, Prometheus is a much smaller publisher because they focus on like sci-fi and high fantasy, so they're on very niche markets. Um, and so their books don't get a lot of exposure. Um, you know, they're not Arbor Collins or a Simon and Schuster. Um, and honestly, PYR and Prometheus have always been really great to me. Um, they're they're really they're a really great uh, publisher. So I definitely love promoting their books as much as possible, and hopefully getting their books into the hands of as many readers as possible. Um, because they really like to support authors who create um, very niche work, who may not have biggest audience in the world, but have a very, uh, dedicated audience. Um, you know, like this very high sci-fi, high fantasy kind of genre. So, definitely give it a look. Hope you enjoyed. My camera cut out for a second there. Um, and I really just wanted to say thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day, good evening, good night, whatever time it is that you're watching.